Welcome to the uh, Ebbs and Flows podcast. Jeremy Lattimore is uh, stepping in for Isaac John. Uh, Normie and Chico were sent him to New York. They said they needed someone with a bit more personality. I'm here. I hope you enjoy this show. We sit down with Toby Rudolph and Blake Braley. You've got great footy IQ. You love playing rugby league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're so, right. Hey, what is the best thing about being a rugby league player? You'd probably say the money, wouldn't you? You would. No, um. if I was Nick, I would say, right? <laughs> <laughs> the ones where it's like too rough, it's like we play a contact sport, like shut the fuck up, seriously. <laughs> Toby Rudolph, Blake Braley, one of the uh, game's true characters and one of the, uh, you probably don't get enough recognition <laughs> in the game and what you're doing for the Cronulla Shark sides, but uh, welcome boys. One character and one actual good player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a good player too, mate. Oh, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Questionable? Questionable? Yeah. Questionable. Yes, he does. No. Great player, mate. 71 games. 71, 72? Oh, yeah. I've done, done research. my research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brails, you're 98, 99. 99. Yeah, 100, 100 next this game. week. Yeah. Where's your next game at? Uh, home against Dragons, actually. So oh, awesome. Derby oh, on Thursday. awesome. Far out. Know, hopefully, Toby can be out there too. It'll be nice. Yeah, beautiful. So, coming off a pretty good win yesterday, Blake. Um, uh, Melbourne the week before. Few few work-ons after that game. H how was the feeling after that game? And obviously, you know, coming back home yesterday, how did you find everything? Yeah, that week was real tough. Um, that flight home was, you know, the longest I've ever had. And um, we could tell everyone just wanted to be out there. And um, that whole week, everyone was sort of itching to get out there. And... A special occasion for Brit playing his one of the game. He's um, been playing great this year for us, and to you know reward him with that two points and a, a good score and a try on his hundredth game is uh, pretty good. Hundred percent, and uh, hopefully the same for you in a few weeks, mate. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. By this week, any plans, boys? Um, I'm going up to the Origin on Tuesday, Wednesday. I haven't finalised details yet. Doing a bit of work up there with TikTok, so that should be good fun and. I think you're going up there too, aren't you? Oh, I'm Moore? up there, yeah, 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 for yeah. work, yeah. For work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yeah, TikTok? Yeah. Hey, no TikTok. <laughs> What's that? Is that social media? Yeah. yeah. No, no idea. Like, I'll find yeah. out. I'll let you know when I find out. Yeah, no worries. Blake, what are you doing? Um, no, I've actually got Thursday plan to go to the wrestling with Cam. The wrestling? Wrestling with Cam. Do a bit of wrestling there with Dale. Oh, I think you meant like WWE. No, no, no. Okay, no. right, right, right. Cam McGuinness. Yeah, Cam McGuinness. And Dale Finucci. Yeah. You're choosing to go and wrestle. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking WWE, but we're yeah, actually talking day off wrestling. Can, no, can no you g give the, uh, the the watchers and listeners a bit of an insight to them two boys and their, their training uh, methods? It's it's like chaos. It's honestly, you in there for 30 seconds and Cam's already bleeding and you got blood <laughs> on your jersey and it's like, where'd it come from? And he's mm. always in the corner. He takes his tooth out and it's just like, I stay away from him. I hate him. Mm. Any, uh, any any good stories from them two boys at training? I do I do know one from like Macca's first couple of weeks. Did he knock T. Wilton out at training in, in a post? Did he? I don't remember. I, I don't think know. that was in his first couple of weeks Actually, at training. <clears throat> I got a good story from Melbourne. Um, Nico and Dal room together. And Dal has this routine where he's anal about his routine, just constantly does everything by the book. Mm. And he has this one bed he's been in his whole career. And Nico thought it'd be a good idea to put his bag, get in the bed and sort of mix up a bit. And... Dale comes in and goes, mate, move your bed. I'm older. I've played more games. This is the rules now. Mm. <clears throat> Dug his heels in, didn't move, and goes, all right, I'll wrestle for you. And Dale Finnegan takes his earphones <laughs> off, jersey <laughs> off, jumper off, bag down, <laughs> shirt off, and then wrestles for the bed, throws Nico onto the table just for the bed and just That sounds crazy. so horny. <laughs> <laughs> Pens him over the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, that does sound like a bit of a sex scene, actually. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, mm. You two boys, any, any talking about pre-game rituals, any pre-game rituals here? I couldn't imagine you, Toby, but I could imagine you, Blake. No, nah, I remember Toby had one where you had to be the last to put your jersey on. Yeah, I and forgot then, about that. Yeah. yeah, I used to mess with his brain and just wait him out, see if he would do it. <laughs> Um, but no, I don't have any. I'd like to hear it pretty relaxed, pretty cruisy. Yeah, that's yeah. your uh, personality. Yeah. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to have heaps. I used to have like a few. I used to have to sing a certain song before a game. Um, I used to have to, yeah, like to put the jersey on. Growing the hair out was one as well. Um, never like, never anything more than that. But it was still annoying because it's sort of all gone now. But the, when I was a bit younger, it was it was definitely in the forefront of my mind. But now I'm just an ultra professional, obviously, and. <laughs> It's all good. Season campaigner. Yeah. Well, just touching on that, obviously 70 and nearly 100 games, you know, how, how long did it take you both sort of to feel like you're an NRL player? And then, um, you know, you just touched on that, you know, these weird intricacies you have when you're a bit younger, but now you outgrow them. Like, what is your preparation like now? Mm, um, honestly, I've never had any prep ever. It's honestly not, not changed once. I, the only thing that has changed were the superstitions along the way. Uh, when I sort of started feeling like I belonged, uh, 
there wasn't really a game or a moment. It just sort of maybe as the years went by, um, probably into my third year, sort of felt like, you know, I sort of was holding a regular starting spot and felt like I was sort of in the mix and, you know, I could sort of mix it with everyone that, that I was sort of playing against. Uh, but in terms of prep, yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to find like a prep, a prep routine, but I almost kind of like not having one because then I can't be thrown off mm. by anything. So uh, pretty easy going as well with, with that sort of stuff, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm exact same. I don't really have a set prep or routine I sort of go through. I just sort of go with the flow and listen to my music. And um, yeah, I feel like if I had those sort of things, I'd um, freak out if I didn't get them done. So I try not to, you know, bring them in and... If they do start creeping, I try to knock them on the head straight away. Did you have any? Did you have any other? I was a little bit weird, yeah. I was, like, my free game, yeah, yeah. My free game prep was uh, yeah. out there. But, mate, we're here to talk about you. Well, it's not me today, all right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm going to throw it to you. But yeah. quickly, just go to, um, you know, pre-game prep. And, you know, it made me think of Fitzgibbon. And obviously, you know, he's come to the club. Top four finish last year. Sitting fifth at the moment. Um, h- h- how do you find him as a coach and leader? And then... I've heard about his pre-game prep of getting out and getting after it on game day with a bit of wrestling. Can yeah. you give the uh, the viewers a bit of an insight into that? Yeah, Fitz is he's nuts, eh? He's actually crazy. Like, love him to bits. The care he has for his players is second to none. Like, I've never experienced anywhere else. Mm. Like, he, he he gets you on his side so easily, effortless, effortlessly, and you, someone you just want to play for. But then game day, I remember him talking to me and. All the forwards, and he, he spoke to to a few of us, just saying how game day is into his jiu-jitsu. He's a brown belt, I think. Yeah, brown belt now. Yeah. Um, and on game day, he does an hour and a half of five minute rounds with no breaks in between, <laughs> so he can come to the game and talk to us about how and how like we got to be tough, we got to be hard, and the only way he can he feels he can do that is by being having a crank neck and a sore wrist. <laughs> yeah. and like, I feel like he's actually done something. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, and he needs a new shoulder and he just refuses uh-huh. to get it because then it'll, that'll be his jiu-jitsu career done. So. How good. Yeah. yeah, he's nutcase. He wears, if we win, he'll keep the same shoes. If he, if we lose, he'll chuck him out. He's just like Yeah, well, a lot so of time intense. doing that, that sort of tends to help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's just so intense. It's, yeah. it's scary. Yeah. Do you want to give your own sponsors a shout out yeah. as we're here? Um, Johnny, no, Johnny B. No, I'm... Budgie smuggler. Budgie, uh, actually, I was thinking that in your pre-game prep. You're wearing them same swimmers every game. No, I don't wear budgies in the game. Oh, really? I get, like, chafed too much. My, my quad's too big. <laughs> yeah, hey, fair, fair. Yeah. Brails? No, I just wear Nike boots, so um, really much of a plug there, but it'd be mm. nice to get a few more things. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone watching, yeah, please exactly. uh, reach out to the boys. <laughs> uh, quickly, just touch on family. Jaden, your brother, uh, he's out injured at the moment. Uh, and then your younger brother, he's in the... Is he now under 20s at Sharks? Yeah, he's in the 20 system now. And um, it's sort of a weird sort of period for me now. I've played with my older brother and then seeing the transition of Taj coming through, it's um, pretty exciting. Hopefully he can get to the NRL and um, to be able to start play with my older and younger brother would be pretty special. Mate, for your parents, so obviously, you know, to get one child to play, to have, you know, two, then ho- hopefully three would be quite mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. With, with Jaden being the older brother, um, do you, you know, do you lean on him for, you know, advice and similar position? Oh, not similar, same position. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, and he's obviously a very mature guy. And he's a, or, well, the two boys I know, you and Jaden are fantastic boys. Um, you know, does that come from the old man? He's involved at Cronulla as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much a whole family affair at the moment. Um, my little brother Taj actually helps with the media out at Sharks there. So he takes photos, he does a bit of content from there. And um, yeah, like you said, Jane's been in the system and the program for a long time now. And um, yeah, I always lean on him. He's always the first one to message me when he thinks I played well or things I can change. And um, he's been around the game longer than myself. So I'm always constantly learning from him and um, pretty lucky to have an older brother who been through the system and played you know, over a hundred games for the NRL. 100%. Now you can uh, pass that wisdom on to your younger brother. Yeah. Who, is he full-time next year? Yeah, I think he's got a pre-season next year. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure how it's going to work. If he gets too good, do I get pushed out? Like, what's, what's the go here? <laughs> so, do sort I, of what you did to Jaden? Do, <laughs> yeah. do, I, do, I, do I go to Newcastle? Does Jaden move on? I don't, I don't know what the, the cycle Mate, is. Mate, that'd be or, ruthless. Yeah, no, hey, uh, yeah. Hey, Jaden, you've got to go in yeah. Newcastle as well. I don't know yeah. what... Oh, yeah, I don't really know what the cycle is, but, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he progresses and... Are you going to try and fold him? Good. Who? Taj. Yeah. You well, are? I can't, yeah, I can't let him... What, what yeah, you? yeah. No, I mean, like, obviously it wouldn't be too often that a hooker runs into a hooker in a game or in training, but if he does, are you going to, like, actually lift him and sort of bury him? No, nah, look, no. Nah, I won't want to put him on show or, yeah. you know, his confidence is pretty what, quiet. What does quiet. it to you? 
Well, then that's a different story. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was going to ask you about family, but let's quickly throw it to you, mate. You've got your own podcast now, <laughs> stuck in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I had, we had to educate Blake what, what it was called. But, we did, um, yeah. Great yeah. teammate over here, obviously, uh, supporting all my uh, goals, desires, ambitions and all that. But yeah, stuck in the middle. It's uh, pretty sure it's sitting at like number one in the Australian podcast right now. But if we can get a few more listeners to it and just get it even above that, it'd be great. Look down the barrel and say that. <laughs> stuck in the middle. Give it a listen. Spotify, YouTube. I think Apple as well. I'm not too sure. I'll learn better next time and come up with a better answer. Mate, and you were telling us before we started how much preparation you do for your podcast and, and you get guests <laughs> on. <laughs> do you want to let everyone know how much that is? Yeah, look, I mean, we have done some every now and again. Like, it's just, Liam and I got together a couple of times and we had like, I think Jake and Tom Tavorovich on to ask some stitch up questions and which I'm sure you have coming as well. Um, <laughs> but like, we sort of thought sitting there with the clipboard was ridiculous. We just sort of, I don't know. We do a bit of research, but mostly guess we get on are our friends anyway, so we sort of know what's going on. But um, yeah, research is minimal, to say the least. Your co-host, he was on this exact podcast not long ago and mm. there was a story about a bag of uh, shit. Do you want to uh, <laughs> respond Elaborate. to that and throw him under the bus in any way you want? It was terrible to live with in terms of like, we were sort of living the dream at the start. We lived in Ramwick at the start when we first lived together. And then... Out of nowhere, we move into Maroubra and he brings his girlfriend into the mix without really sort of consulting me about it. <laughs> and like, we were just, we were so happy before. We were so happy and then he just had to ruin the relationship. And I think, um, I don't know, is there any sort of more mistrust in bringing <laughs> a third sort of party yeah. into, the, into the equation? So I remember we used to go over to your house and I felt awkward having his girlfriend there. You know what I mean? It was just... It was weird. I don't know. It, it was, was weird. It was a boys pattern then changed. Yeah. yeah. And or, also, I wanted to say as well, um, Liam was on about, I want to say 500 grand at the time we were living together. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was on about 50. Uh, and he paid, oh no, I'm not, I'm not paying more than 100 bucks for rent. No way, I'm not yeah. paying more than 100 bucks for rent than you are. So I was paying 300 bucks for a little shoebox and he was paying 350 for like an ensuite. So tight ass. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Nice. Hey, that was your right of reply. I like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of roommates, you just moved to the Shire. Mm -hmm. um, how, how long you been at the Sharks now? Jesus, since 2019 was my first year there. Yep. Yeah. And it's taken that long to move to the Shire. Yeah, I love the mm. area. I love where I'm from so much. Yep. But uh, the drive was just getting a bit tedious. And the roommate I had previously, which is my older brother, who you know a little <laughs> bit, um, yeah, it sort of wasn't a really good living situation at the end there. He constantly was having parties and vendors. <laughs> and See, that's not in your personality. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, it's not really me. So <laughs> when you have to train and actually work for a living, it's a bit challenging to deal with that. So I moved to Cronulla by myself in a really nice pad. And... Uh, yeah, I've been there for two weeks now. I haven't heard from you once since I've been there. So, um, yeah. I called Thanks. you three times last week. You were meant to actually come have a beer with me on Saturday and you brushed me because you're that professional. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. yeah. Uh, what, if you walk into the locker room tomorrow and there's a, you know, roommate wanted and, you know, see Toby's number down at no. the bottom, would you never? Not a chance. No yeah. way. Yes, you would. No. You'd love to live with me. No. You're Just, lying. You're no. lying with the camera. I don't like it. No, we're two way two different people. I think... Well, you bring your girlfriend anyway, so it wouldn't be allowed. That's true. Yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> the time we spent um, at the snow when it was at the buy around yeah a few years ago was probably enough we were there for what two three days yeah and what I experienced in that room was enough to say yeah that's not for me were we in there drinking bickies and tea and going yeah. to sleep yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were. <laughs> yeah are you roommates when you go away for footy no, no. no. I, Teague. I'm Teague or Nico I'm kind of yeah. crazy yeah you'll see Teague yeah but we well, always end up in the same room. Yeah, we're always in like four or five of us in the same room. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's cute. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> what, uh, what, what, do you want to throw Nico or Teague under the bus or Connor Trace? I could imagine nah, Connor would be nah, great Connor's to be good. as a roommate. Yeah. Nico, yeah. a bit selfish? Um, he gets up, yeah, his alarm goes up at 6.30. Yeah. Even though I want to sleep in. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, there's that. Uh, Teague's nose is enormous. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that's I have to true. say about Teague. Um, <laughs> No, nah, you have a smoke in the rain and keep it dry. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent, yeah, yeah. But other than that, no, they're both pretty good. Are they? Yeah. yeah so Nico's right. got any weird pre-game rituals? A thousand, but I can't even like. He's out of the room doing yeah. weird stuff beforehand. Yeah. So. Really? He, um, we have like a spine meeting before we go out, and he can't have it in a certain room, and it can't be a certain time. It's really. We do, yeah, we put our hands in. He won't put his hand in. It's just like all these different things. He has to get ready for it. It's just 
messes with his head. Really? Well, yeah, he rang me a couple of weeks ago on game day and he goes, I'm just going down to the to the field to have, have a kick through. He does a kick through on game day, which I was like, oh, that's a bit odd. He's like, yeah, I do it every week. He was taking wee man, his roommate, like down with him. He goes and must kick the ball back for him. Wow. <laughs> How rock solid is that? Uh, yeah, wee man is the most rock solid man yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah, honestly. he's a good man, eh? Yeah, yeah. proper. He's a ledge. Unreal. Uh, like, obviously, Nico, there's been a fair bit of attention brought to him in recent times and, you know, he bounced back yesterday, which we knew he would. He's a resilient man and um, fantastic fantastic rugby league player he's got around him at training and um how, how's he handled everything you know internally um really good like he has he has his own mindset coach and he has his own avenues to sort of process the way uh, process the things he wants to process so um look he's he's just the ultimate professional Nico. He, he knows what he's doing and uh you know to get the performances out of out of him that we did last year and, and this year as well minus a couple of games um you know he's he obviously, like I said, he's, he's an experienced campaigner, knows what he's doing. Um, and us rolling around him definitely would have helped him out as well. But, yeah, he's just very strong mentally. And, mm. like I said, the mindset coach um, helps as well. Yeah. For sure. Mm. I think he's got a good um, sort of friendship and group around him at the moment. He said, we, man, they've been close for a long time. And um, he's got his mum living in with that at the moment. And, um, yeah, they're definitely helping him out there. And I think he's off social media a little bit, which is also helping his headspace. And, um, yeah, I thought on the weekend they bounced back and, Proved a lot of people wrong, and um, yeah, hopefully he continues the form. I don't that, and I don't think he needed to really prove anything. We know the sort of player he is, but um, mm. you know, as the rugby league media is like it, you know, they're looking for a victim or to get into someone, and mm. unfortunately, they made a lot of noise around Nico, which I think was totally unfair. But it was great to see you boys bounce back yesterday. Just t going back to that game, um, you you yourself cut the try assist to a couple of the big followers in the middle. And yeah. uh, I only saw the back end of the game, but big Tommy Hazleton got a bit of a uh, round of applause when he went off. Yeah, I know. I was actually, I was talking to Toby on the way here. Um, I was on the field and the crowd just erupted and I was, didn't know what was going on. I thought so it was a streaker or <laughs> something going on, but it's just Tommy Hazleton walking off the field and getting the, the round of applause, which he probably deserves. He's sort of turning to the cult hero at the moment. Um, sort of took over Toby's spot there, who was the cult hero, but... <laughs> Now he's tall, he's 40, 20, we call him, and yeah. he's got the bold head, it's, um, it's unreal. <laughs> Very relatable for all us rugby league fans. <laughs> um, how are you gonna deal with that? What, you know, are you gonna compete? And then yeah. let's touch on a little bit, you know, the alpha males around training and- Yeah, no, nah, um, I love Tom Hazelton too much to compete with him in anything. If yeah. he wants my spot, he can have it. Um, <laughs> I'm annoyed about the three tries yesterday. Yeah. We've been playing with this, with this guy for four years now, and how many have you given me? Not one. Not one. Not a but, single one. But you are the highest decoy in the NRL for the past two years. <laughs> highest decoys for the last two years. Well, i got to thank you for that. <laughs> well, yeah, thank mate, you. your attack was now nearly the best in the NRL, so you played a big role in yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. He's going to get this time. No, he's not. Oh, he never does. Thanks, thanks, mate. Mm. Appreciate it. Mad. Good yeah. chat. Mate, that's good. Yeah. Also, I want to bring up a bit of a personal thing here, actually. Um, cool. You know, I met you out last uh, Christmas Eve and mm. you know, I thought we had a good night out together. Yeah. Um, added you on Instagram about a week later. <laughs> then um, anyway, crickets for a few months, yeah. ran into you on Anzac Day, brought it up after a few schooners. <laughs> <laughs> out on the syrup on the weekend, I get a follow <laughs> on Saturday night. Why'd it take you six months to follow me back? Was Mate. there beef on them two nights out or <laughs> what's Hon doing? Honestly, like literally, so you, you brought it up a couple of times, like you said, right? <laughs> And I think it was just in one ear out the other, like, oh, yeah, I'll follow you back, I'll follow you back. And then I actually needed something from you. <laughs> so I looked at the thing, follow back. Oh, yeah, he's been talking about this for a while now. So I just, I don't know, it's just me being selfish, I suppose. Yep. Sorry, did it hurt? Well, I was just like, oh, am I upset this guy? Why is he not <laughs> yeah, following no, me no, back? No. I was like, I know I get loose on the syrup too. Yeah, so. No, 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 you're <laughs> fine. It was, yeah. it was my fault. It okay. wasn't you, it was me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, is he like that? Does he oh, hold yeah. a grudge? Or is Definitely. he a bit funny around training? <laughs> yeah, like, he's only talked to a select group. Yeah, well, I'm sure he gets you know thousands of followers a day, and it's hard to always keep up with yeah. that. So yeah, there's, it's that too. With yeah. the with the campaigns he does and the photo shoots, it's he's always <laughs> in the spotlight. So it's a bit it's tough for him. I'll give him a way out there. I get it. Do you uh, do you see yourself as a bit of a sex symbol? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, no, nah, with these teeth and uh, these cauliflowers. The, the great teeth. Yeah, with their horse teeth. As yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I know one, I guess. Guilty. But um, no, I don't. Uh, I see myself as, uh, I don't know, class clown, Toby Rudolph, nothing, not too sexy.
Yeah. It's good though. Like, and, you know, with the way rugby league is and the media now, you know, you've sort of seen the, the personalities phased out of the game. So it's refreshing to have people like yourself and, mm. you know, you're putting yourself out there and mm. having a laugh and drinking beers with the, the crowd on the sideline. And mm. um, I think, you know, then when you do go out into the clubs and that, you've got your arm around everyone and mm. people want to see that. They don't want you, you know, not talking to people and being arrogant. So don't change, mate. Mm. No, I won't. I would never be arrogant like yourself. I'd always want to sort of stay <laughs> humble. And, mate, and, uh, actually, maybe at the start when he first came to Kunala, was a bit arrogant. I was. Yeah, oh, you're a bit, yeah it was yeah, hard. Yeah. It was. I remember when he first came. Yeah, I know this. I was speaking to my brother, thinking I'm never going to be friends with this bloke. <laughs> I don't want to know him. Don't want to talk to him. Because he came in, you know, he's like he's got that you know bubbly personality. And as soon as he walked in, he's calling himself Clive Churchill, <laughs> which put a few people offside, as it would. How many games had he played at this point? <laughs> not one. Not one. Not one. Josh Morris made a point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He made so sure yeah, he but that. I still remember the day when he walked in. And I thought oh, I'm never going to be friends with this bloke. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, I heard that many ages times. ago from him. Yeah, many times. Yeah, yeah. mate, for Blake Braley to, to feel say like that, that yeah. the nicest guy in the world. I did something mate. wrong. Really? Yeah. Well, it was. I think I got a few people on side. I told this story yesterday. Actually, um, it was. Uh, it was our Christmas party at, at, at Gal's house, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> did all, he invoice you to go? <laughs> no, uh, he actually no. But it was you know, actually, that was a good. That was a good. It day. was a good day, but he yeah. actually did ask us all for twenty bucks to buy cases. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> so that, that did yeah. happen anyway. So, um, but now we get there, we're all in the source, having a great time. I think I was about four weeks post surgery, um, post knee reconstruction. Um, I'm just peppering up with everyone, like, mm. oh, what did you guys do last year? I won a grand final. I you guys, did, you guys came third. I won a comp. Yeah. I won a Clive Churchill. Um, and one Josh Morris didn't take too kindly to this uh, and he started just going have you have you won a State of Origin Series have you played for your country have you played for your state have you played NRL you've done nothing I was like nah I won a Club Churchill though <laughs> he just hated it so yeah there was a bit of drama there with me and him but uh, I, won a, I got a few people on, on side that day yeah yeah do you catch up with Josh now? <laughs> Mate, I, t I told him the story to his face yesterday. Oh, it was to him you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So now we're sweet now. We're sweet now. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, back to the change room. Um, you know, who's the alpha males? Who's the personalities of the group? I could obviously know that you'd be the first nude in the shower. Fact Anyone yeah. else following you? Yeah, Dale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dale, yeah, yeah. Matty Cavallo was, but he's, yeah. he's gone now. Um, Jesse Ramian, which is... Like, yes, oh. we know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, is yeah. there anyone else? Peg sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wade, Wade. Yeah. Um, but I think that's about it. I think that'd be about it. Yeah. Uh, Would be about it. In terms of alphas, I'm going to go see Fatalica. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. When he Big walks. Big energy, yeah. yeah. When he walks past him, you're like, oh. Like, yeah, yeah. He's the chief. We call him the chief. Yeah. He's just. That was the nickname in school. Mm. Fun fact. Mm. You wouldn't mm. mess with him. No. Nah. But he's actually, he's a really nice guy, isn't he? Ledge, yeah. Ledge. But, um, he's one of those guys that like, he doesn't say a whole lot, but when he speaks, you listen kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the celebrations recently when Man City won the uh, the championship over there and there's a guy called Jack Grealish yeah, getting around yeah. full kit. No, I'm um, I've seen this, yeah. You know, if, come the end of, uh, or early October this year, you win the premiership. Who will that player in your group be? I think I know the answer to this. Yeah. <laughs> What's the one what T Rudolph? Do? Oh, he, he was still just, wearing full yeah, kit. He just constantly. Been, yeah, three, four, five days, and he's still in the same kit. Yeah, okay. As just everywhere he goes, he's just life of the party, pretty much. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to say who it's going to be. I think it's going to yeah. be Toby for sure. Cam McGuinness. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It could be. Yeah. Could be. Actually, I might throw a smoke out there. Sione Katoa. Yeah. Oh, really? He Mate. is. He's the best. He is hilarious. Yeah, he's. He, honestly, he is the funniest man in the Sharks, yeah. if not the NRL. Fit income. I'm not so him, Jay Narbe. Yeah. So good. Well, yeah. when, when I asked Toby the other day about potential options, yeah. he tossed up you and him, but he goes, I reckon Sione might go a bit quiet with a mm. microphone in front yeah. of him. He also had a large night last night, so I don't know how it'd go yeah. today. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd be dusty. We he'd should have dusty. brought him in when he was still half full. Yeah. We might have got word there. <laughs> yeah, yeah that'd have been good. That's but no, good. he's, yeah, undercover, he's hilarious. He doesn't say much, but when he does, it's just yeah. comedy gold every time. Yeah, probably. He's the yeah, best. nice. So we might have to try and recruit yeah, him in mate, somewhere. hundred yeah. percent. Get him on. He'll just love it. Just mic him up so he doesn't know all <laughs> this, all this yeah, stuff yeah. he would hate, but um, yeah. he's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And what yeah. about, um, so 10 games to go for you boys. Um, you know, have you got, you obviously got your eyes on the top four. Um, have you looked at your run home? What's the, the run home look like? Yeah, I sort of had a look the other day. Um, I think we go to Perth and New Zealand, which is, was a good little fun trip away. Um, definitely got some tough games coming up with Penrith there. And um, yeah, I think the competition is so tight this year. If you drop a game, you're out of the eight. So everyone's on notice and everyone's on watch. And um, we know if we don't play well, we're out the back door. Mm. 
Uh, I haven't looked at any games. <laughs> I'm just trying to get back to play. Uh, I know we got uh, Dragons, Titans, and then I think it's Perth, is it, after that? No, I think it's New Zealand. Or New Zealand. And then Perth later in the year. Okay, right. Um, I do know, yeah, Perth is South. Uh, we got mm. Panthers. Um, Roosters again maybe as well Who it can be anything Yeah uh, So Canberra I've never been Canberra I've never been Canberra Yeah it's one to have to bogey team yeah. at the moment um, Down there or home At home, either. At home. Yeah. Oh, oh really yeah. We haven't beat them either yeah, yeah, yeah Never beaten them Fed That used now. to be the Dragons It's mm. now the Sharks mm. Indeed Indeed So Looking forward to it Looking forward to actually getting back Playing some footy And uh, hopefully we can play the last 10 games in a row Without it, uh, any hiccups mm. How is the foot now Like you've missed how many games Oh, uh, well, round six was my last game. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we had three buys in that time, Perfect. which helps. Yeah. Uh, but still missed a fair few. So, foot's feeling okay. It's now just the lungs, which are the <laughs> main issue. <laughs> but it's coming along. Coming along. I want to get folded all this week. Uh, the boys have a buy, and most of them are, are away doing fun stuff, except mm. for you doing wrestle. Um, <laughs> that's fun for them. That's so fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Kim and Dale are stoked, but... Uh, yeah, looking to sort of get the lungs, the, the fitness base back, possibly play a bit of a reserve grade and get some Ks in the legs and then uh, be right for the sort of back end of the year. Yeah, nice. And then we're just talking away games. Um, you played a, how many seasons in the Q Cup? Just one. Just one. How did you, uh, what, what was your favourite away trip in, in, in Queensland? And, you know, to yeah. now, yeah. you um, always got the jeans pack when you're on a away trip. <laughs> yeah, mate, honestly, this is a true story. I actually, I always have my jeans, but there's been like about four or five times I've forgotten my boots. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had, you had to wear Tolles' boots or something. Yeah, I had to wear Tom Hazelton's ones, I had to wear Tolles' ones. Uh, actually, I, did you do your ankle in someone else's boots? No, I did my knee did in, in, yeah. in Tolles' boots. Yeah. Um, but I still got my jeans for afterwards, so it's always good. <laughs> uh, Q Cup, best away trip. There was too many, like Cairns, Hardy Bar's Cairns. Cairns is a very good time. Gilligan's. Um, but like, even like country round, we went to Gundawindi and it was one of the best nights out ever. Yeah, right. We went to Mackay and we had the best time at the Lost Rabbit or something. It was when I met Nico actually. Mm. Um, so like, you know what? It doesn't matter where you go with 17 of your best mates. If you're with 17 of your best mates, you're going to have a good time wherever you go. So, um, but in terms of NRL way trips, it's hard to get past the Mad Cow, as you would mm. know very well, Jeremy Lattimore. Townsville, yes. Mm. Mm. Perth, have you actually ever been to Perth? No, Twice. You have? Yeah, we went to the Nines. Oh, yeah, we did too, yeah. 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 Night the out. Best night out ever. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah. It is a great night out yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah, so much fun. Yeah, it's, I don't know what it is about over there. I went there and it was like 40 degrees mm. in, in February, but it's not like 40 degrees here where, you, where you're dying. It was actually like bearable and look at mm. my beautiful brown skin here. Mm. I'm white as, so I hate mm. the sun, but mm. it was completely fine and, you know, focused in on my football game and then the night out, which I know you'd be the same. Yeah, nailed it. Correct. Um, wait, were you there for the nines or were you there actually probably playing? I think I was retired by the time I was coming. <laughs> Sorry. I've, been, I've been out the back door for a while. No, I went there <laughs> yeah, 2012 yeah. for a Dragons trial. Uh-huh. Um, oh, uh-huh. We were talking about Steve Price before. Can, can we go into a bit about Pricey and, um, you know, his influence at the club? Like, obviously, Fitz is the main leader and driver of everything in the football club. But Pricey, he was there when they won the comp in 2016, won the comp in 2010 at um, Dragons, went over and had a lot of success in the Super League as well. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on Pricey and what he does for the football club? Yeah, look, I love that man. Mm. Um, all our coaching staff run real. There's, you know, usually there's like one Derek amongst them, but <laughs> honestly, all ours are just the, they're all the, the best blokes. Like I'll I'll sit and have a chat to him about anything in life, not just football related, about life, about houses, about um, you know, about drinking stories. He's got a few of those as well. Mm. Uh, but look, he's just he's that man that every now and again, when you sort of had a like the, the the Melbourne game, he'll just sort of bring a bit of light to the room and sort yeah. of change the mood a bit. Um, but also. He's that one that when you are sort of, you know, fucking around a bit, he'll bring it in and he'll sort of be that one that uh, drives that focus. So he's just an invaluable, invaluable member, I think, to our coaching staff and our team. That's what I think. So I probably stole your thunder there. Yeah, no, he's, yeah, he's great. He's yeah. um, got that perfect mix of being your mate and being a coach mm. and he knows when to have fun and when to be hard and he always... Um, he loves being hard. <laughs> yeah, he always um, brings a bit of life and joy around the club and... Um, yeah, he got Toby with a good stitch up the other day. Oh, which I did was good. Too. It's outstanding. Yeah. Um, you want to tell the story? You want to tell it? I think I think you should. Okay. You, yeah, you were there. You were experiencing it. Yeah, yeah, first hand. So um, <laughs> I come into the sheds after a meeting, I think it was, and um, there was two coppers just standing like in the sheds, <laughs> and they look at me and like I heard them say Toby Rudolph, and I was going, mm. no, nah. <laughs> Whole room went dead quiet. Fully, like everyone was just Music so serious. Yeah. I'm going like, there's, there's no fucking way that there are two cops here coming to get me. And then I started thinking like, what have I done? 
Like, what have I done that I don't know about? Like, which is even worse. Like, they've come here to the Sharks to come and get me. So I walk out and they're like, oh, mate, you had an incident at the um, Rupert Seals about a month ago. And in my head, I'm going, maybe these guys are strippers. Like, I don't know what's going on here. So I asked him, like, are you boys strippers? But my heart's pounding at the time. I'm sweating bullets like I am now. And um, just nervous wreck. And I turn around and Price is just there giggling in the yeah, corner. So and I just went, you fucking, yeah. Everyone started laughing at me and um, my heart was racing for about another probably hour after that. So... It was a it was a good stitch up. Mm. It was actually I'm one now. Yeah, that yeah. is a that is a great stitch up, and <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine that the heart rate. What Mate, it was doing through the roof, and he said he said he wanted to like he told him to get the cuffs out and just cuff me straight away, which would have I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> Did anything yeah. happen at the Seals a month ago? <laughs> Mate, oh yeah, I said I'd been there in a year, so that, that was what sort of threw me. That um yeah, good old good man, Pricey, good man. Right. So what's he run attack or D? Defense, edge defense, yeah. Okay, and then who runs your attack? Uh, Josh Hane and uh, DJ, yeah, Danny Holsworth, yeah. So that's who you're exclusively working with, with the uh, the spine? Yeah, yeah, they both do a lot of work with the spine. They've obviously been half himself. DJ, he knows the game pretty well. And um, yeah, he's very detailed with what he does. Um, definitely breaks down a, a defense of our position really well and um, gets us best prepared each week. So it's working. We've got some great attack and um, got some pretty good plays coming. Bloody oath. What, um, you know, with the, the game where it's at now, you know, there's constantly different things changing with the rules and, you know, the contacts, the new ones hitting the legs. What do they call that? A hip, hip drop. drop. Hip drop, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you think? Do you like the way the game is now? And, you know, what changes would you like to see moving forward and, uh, if you know, for the betterment of our football game? And I think the way the game is now, it really suits the way you play, Blake. Like, you are owning and dominating the ruck and um, obviously that allows Nico and Matty to do their thing. Yeah, I'm actually really enjoying that six again rule that's come into play a couple of years back um gives myself i'm not the biggest strongest or fastest player out there but um feel like i'm pretty fit so the back end when the bigger boys getting pretty tired that's when i sort of come into my game and um yeah obviously the crackdown is pretty hard with that hip drop it's hard to um you know pull away out of those tackles sometimes they happen pretty quickly but um yeah duty of care for the players always number one and um yeah i'm just glad to i come away each week unscathed Yep. Um, first, I just want to say you are really asking the tough questions here. Yeah. I really like Why? It. No, not tough questions. Just like this is a really serious question. I just want to congratulate you, you on yeah. the question. Like, Mate, nice. well, you, know, you know, I love having a joke and a laugh, but also, yeah, you know, I, was just I, like, I know he's got great footy IQ. You love playing rugby league. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, you're so, right. Hey, tell yeah. me what you want. Um, I like the six again rule. Again, mm. agree with that. What I don't like is how they're ruling out common sense. So, like, for instance, there was a. A game a while ago, I think Michael Sevo needs someone in the face on the run, or someone needs someone in the face. Um, Suwali. 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 Um, no, 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 no one's oh, running no, the ball. Oh. Anyway, it was like someone was running through the ball. He he needs someone in the head, and it was a penalty for like careless contact. But like it's an accident. Like there are some instances in the game where it's a pure accident, but they're ruling against it as a penalty. And like some of the things you can't control. Um, I saw a penalty the other day given for for Michael Sevo. He was holding a bloke down. Uh, with his bare, with his hands like this, pushing him into the ground. It was a penalty for being too rough. Like and another penalty for I think Victor Radley um, hit in someone's ribs. When I was in the twenties and there was a rib exposed, our coach would say, "Break his ribs, break mm. his fucking ribs." And now it's it's too rough. Like I don't like that that direction the game's going in. I like a fast game. I like a game where you know it's free flowing and you know no penalties. But just the, the ones where it's like too rough. It's like we play a contact sport. Like shut mm. the fuck up, seriously. Mate, hundred percent. Yeah, I do agree with a few of the things there that you touched on, and um, we do need to remember it's it's a game of sort of gladiators and yes. physical contact. You yeah. can't take mm. that away from it because that's why it is so appealing. But also, you know, that quickness at the ruck brings yeah. the attack, and you know, fans love and watch an exciting footy. They don't want to mm. see sometimes maybe a, a ten four scoreline, but you you want to see yeah. tries getting scored sure. and um, our talent on display. Mm. Uh, all right, so that was love that <laughs> great input. <laughs> Thank you. What is the best thing about being a rugby league player? Mm. You'd probably say the money, wouldn't you? You would. No, uh. if I was Nick, I would say that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh. Now, you know, what? I've worked a bunch of jobs under the sun and to call it a job is doing it a disservice. Like, you go hang out with your mates um, that you spend more time with than your family. Uh, you go away together. You, mm. you know, you. It's there's barely a serious moment in sight. Obviously, it's serious when you try and win games and... Um, my phone's ringing. That's very professional. I'm sorry. <laughs> put this on the ground. Um, there are serious times when you need to, you know, actually put your best foot forward and try and, you know, everyone's there to, to win a competition. But to call it a job, like I said, it's it's not a real job, and it's just 
it's honestly a pleasure to play the game and, and to be paid to do what you love. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, being in the sheds after a game and everyone's happy, everyone's laughing, having a few beers after you win. Um, yeah, just getting to, when you start the season off and you got new players in and, you know, you're a bit awkward that the first few stages, then flash forward, you know, to halfway through the season and your best mates, you're talking about our life, you know, everything about them and you're sharing all these tough situations together. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty special. I, I really enjoy the away trips when we go away and your room and you get to know about someone else even more and, um, yeah, you pretty much, it's honestly like your family. You're with each other 24 seven and, um, yeah, the, the friendships and the connections you build is really strong. Mate, what's the worst thing about being a professional rugby league player? Um, I guess being in the public eye to an extent, like, you know, it's, it's nice uh, being recognised for achievements you've, you've done and for the hard work you put in, but, you know, there's also a million eyes on you at once and sometimes, you know, you can't always behave the way you want to behave or if you do misbehave, it's can be controversial. So, uh, but look, the, the, the worst part is it's is far outweighed by, by the goodness in the game and yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yep. What about you, bro? Yeah, it's definitely been in the public eye. I even say probably tackling. I know some, <laughs> <laughs> some of the boys go tackling. It's like, come on, give me a week off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Even this week, got Frankie Pelle and Pangai coming in. It's like, you know, I'm, and 80, spotting ki you I'm out. 80 kilos ringing wet. And yeah. yeah, definitely after the games, I'm pretty sore. And um, yeah, maybe... If I could maybe put on a few more kilos, I'd play change me answer. Mate, you play well above your weight. And I think often I see players who are way bigger than you going vertical. So <laughs> mm. I didn't think that would be a concern for you. <laughs> yeah. um, so you're 27. How old are you, Brails? 24. 24. Oh, far out. What um, Have you started to think post-rugby league and are you doing anything at the moment? I know you're doing your potty. Uh, anything else outside of rugby league, which, you know, to, you know, when you get that period when you do have to transition, putting things in place now. Yeah, no, I've, been, um, I've got a few ideas I want to sort of do after footy. Um, when I first came in um, to the NRL, I started my, um, you know, PE teaching course at Wollongong Uni, but I actually lasted two weeks and then pulled the pin on that. Um, but yeah, I've got a few um, sort of ideas. I want to probably stay in the game a little bit, um, be a specialist coach in dummy half or in the spine or a bit of kicking would be nice. Um, or even um, you know a different avenue with being a, a primary school teacher or a firefighter. I want to you know help out the community somehow, and I don't want to be stuck in an office. I, I don't think I could see myself being you know stuck inside and being on a laptop for too long. I'm a pretty active person. I want to be outdoors. So yeah, anything outside, I'm I'm happy to do. Yeah, nice. What about you, Big Toads? Yeah, um, I attempted university when I was younger and I found out it wasn't for me. Can't mm. study, can't sit still, uh, can't do something I don't want to do. Uh, so really, yeah, I know. <laughs> weird, eh? Um, but in terms of, I, I had some good chat with you about it, about yep. what to do and just sort of building those connections that you meet, you know, you, you, the, the amount of people you meet in, in good places in rugby league is, is ridiculous and I'm sort of slowly learning how to, you know, make use of that and, and build some relationships in the game. Um, in terms of an actual avenue, I don't, that hasn't really presented itself yet. I haven't really got a skill to be a specialist <laughs> coach, so that's sort of out the window for me. Yeah. Um, but look, the one thing I want to do when I'm done is just travel. Is I want to see the world. I want to. It's a big world out there, and I've lived in a very small part of it uh, so far. So, sure. I think through doing that, I think um, it'll sort of open some doors and 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 uh, show me like the way I want to go uh, when footy's done. Because yeah, I don't want these years to be the best years of my life. Um, that's that's one thing that I've sort of realised lately, and. I'm worried about that. I'm worried this will be the best years of my life and I don't, I don't want that to be that way. There's a lot of life to live after footy and um, yeah, I need to start sort of thinking about that and getting old and I'm breaking down already. So I'm waiting to see what happens. Mate, that, well, I think it comes back a bit to your mentality and having that sort of mentality and attitude because the reality is you retire at 33, you know, you've got to work for another 30 to 40 years. Mm. So um, this, when you look back, is only a small time in your life, but it is some of the best years of your life. Like you said, you're going to work with 30 blokes and yeah. you, you're lifting weights, you're feeling good about yeah. yourself, you're going yeah. out, people are cheering. For, yeah, well, yeah. Cheer, cheer for you guys, not me. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. you know, you're doing what you love as well, but there, there is 30, 40 years and the way you're already thinking, I think you're thinking along the, like, along the right lines. Um, you, you spoke about travel. Did you two go to America together last year? We were there together. We, we were there at the same yeah, time, we Austin. There. How was that? It's great. Yeah, it's great. Um, he had a way better trip than me for sure. Yeah, fact. Yeah, Nico yeah. Hines. Don't get him on a plane. Don't Not get him out of Australia. Ever Why? Again. He's just. I went to Bali with him. Yeah. I don't. Oh, should I say it on camera? He got Bali belly. <laughs> yeah. He 
shut the bed. <laughs> literally, literally, he literally, literally shut the bed. Um, and he's just, yeah, the, we were there for four days, freaked out, didn't, didn't enjoy it. Obviously, we all got sick, so that wasn't great. And since then, yeah, I don't think he'll be leaving the country again. America yeah. was the same. Worse. Didn't enjoy America. No. Really? Yeah, um, he only ate steak and mash. So you're traveling mm. around, you want to try different food, you want to try different cultures. <laughs> and it's just like, where are chips? Like, where are they? Like, he does, all he gives a fuck about, he doesn't want to try something new and this and that. Oh, let's get half the order and half the order and we'll swap. No, nah, <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll get scared. Um, but at the same time, he was traveling with Toby for a majority, which is tough a headache in itself, yeah. You know, I'm a good traveler. What <laughs> yeah, do you mean? You I'm lost fun. your passport, you lost your I didn't wallet. lose your passport. Did you lose your wallet? No, you I didn't have. You left in the car. No. Oh, I lost, lost a phone in the car. Phone. You got a bat. Yeah. yeah. Headaches. Memories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. Ear in, ear, eardrum. Yeah, but that was like, in barley pools, I'm surprised I didn't get like AIDS or something. <laughs> That's it. I was super, put my head under every single pool and then I get on a flight. So, anyway. Barley pools is where you get <laughs> Barley <laughs> pools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was, um, yeah, we, we did meet up in Austin and had a great time. Saw the mm. Red Hot Chili Peppers live. Yeah. That was mad. Yeah. Um, Rainy Street, 6th Street, Austin. Great city. And then you guys ended up going to New York yeah. and Vegas and having the best time ever. Went so. to a college NFL game, which was sick. I hated it. To Toby almost passed out. Yeah, I knew the game. From the heat or the alcohol? No, no. I, that was literally, I just got a 30-hour flight from, uh, no, I got a 30-hour flight from Bali to LA. And then I had to drive, because I had an ear infection, I had mm. to drive 30 hours <laughs> yeah. from exactly LA to that? Texas. I had to drive across the country with a, with a friend of mine. Um, then I got, I, the first thing I do is get to the game. And we walk up to the very top bleachers and I'm just like <laughs> in a world of hurt. Yeah. And then I just like start like feeling like the weight of gravity just pulling me down. I'm like, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. Yeah. And um, we're, in the, we're in the nosebleeds and he's lying down in between the seats. Yeah, mate, I the was not water well. on his head. He's, yeah. Oh, all sorts. Well, you know, it was a big, it was a big few days. Mm. If you're given an RPE after the game, he's given 10 out of 10 experience. You're, you're zero out of 10, <laughs> mate, but yeah, nine I'm, out of 10 on the head noise. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. So are you looking for any travel partners for this off season? I don't think there'll be anyone <laughs> queuing up or... <laughs> no, well, everything else was great other than those experiences. Uh, I'm going to be... five of them. <laughs> there was a few, yeah, there was a fair few. Oh, I was there for two weeks too. Yeah, I know. No, I was only in the States. We meant to go there for ages, yeah. but I was in LA for two nights. It was shit. And then uh, it was a two day drive and then um, Austin for four days. Then Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Had a time Mexico. And you're in a relationship, Rails? Yeah. How long yep. have you been settled down for, mate? Um... Actually, not is it that. official? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, not that long. Um, it's still pretty fresh. Um, I'm enjoying it. I was never great at being single. I um, mm. enjoy. I'm the glad you admit it now, finally. Yeah. Yeah, good. I um, yeah, I definitely enjoy having my partner there, and yeah, um, yeah it's been great. We told you, love her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut that. We can cut that. <laughs> yeah. I want you to just look down the barrel of the camera and tell you. No, nah, no. Nah. Do you want to give her a shout out? No. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Toby, <laughs> do you want to give your girlfriends a shout out? <laughs> Susan is there, is Rudolph, there... yeah. I love you, Susan. You're the best lady I've ever met, and uh, the only woman in my life, and I love you for it. Love you, my man. man. Wow. Are you looking for love? Always. Yeah. Always looking for love. Just haven't found it yet. <laughs> okay. One night, no, I was going to say one night love or <laughs> no, longer term well, love like Brails is looking for. I mean, you can always find, I've heard plenty of stories of one night love turning into long term love. Yeah. You know, they're not sort of mutually exclusive. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for love actively all the time. It's just, I just haven't really found that yet. Maybe one day. Mm. Mate, where you're living down along the Esplanade, I'm sure yeah. you'll be doing a fair bit of uh, recruiting down along the uh, <laughs> Esplanade there. Yeah, well, I mean... I do have like this balcony that overlooks the Esplanade and I think in the summer I'll just be a bit of a bit of a party vibe, a bit of a, hey, what are you guys doing? Want to come up to my amazing apartment? Hey. You sent me a photo of it yesterday. I did, yeah. It's pretty good, eh? I had a 10 head noise at home and yeah. your, your smile and it is. Water in the background, it looked fantastic. It is, it is. It's a good place. You should come around sometime and call me. Yeah, well, man, if you reply to my messages. And <laughs> actually, back. funny you saying like about players when they come to your club and, you know, getting to know them and it took you two years to like this yeah. bloke. And then he's like, I'm not arrogant. I'm like, he didn't follow me back yeah, for six I months. I'm getting mixed messages off this guy. Well, I just, I wasn't sure if you wanted to be my friend or my business associate. I don't know what was going on. You with LCI, you with this, you with that. No, nah, mate, I'm a friend of everyone. Well, if I like him. Okay. Paul? <laughs> I like him, huh? Not Paul. Paul. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. well um, dude. Yeah. What about you, Brails? You, I can imagine. Nah, you this I can't. Anyone. I don't think I can fight. Never been fight in my life. So actually one time, um, a school game, I did get in a fight. Well, I didn't, but our team did um, with Sif Italikai's team. We didn't oh, know yeah. each other. And he right hand hooked my brother and he's still got the photo of his head gashing out. That was the closest I got to a fight. And then since then, no. Were you playing with your brother? 
playing my brother. School team. Oh, how old was the age yet? Uh, was it 18 or 16, something like yep. that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, there you go. And it's if I 130 kilos, <laughs> yeah. 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no thanks. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thrown in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mate, you, you got caught into the Origin squad the other week. H how was that um, experience? And, um, you know, the footy you're playing, you were obviously very close to getting selected for Origin too. Um, yeah, how was it all? Yeah, it was great. Um, it was good to see, you know, behind the scenes of how the week goes and how the best players in the competition prepare and train. And, um, yeah, it was unreal to sort of meet new people and, um, you know, teammate, um, when you're first teams, you, you don't really know each other, you have that sort of rivalry, but then once you, you know, get into those camps, you realise they're actually really nice guys, uh, you know, great people. And, um, you know, the short time I was there, made some good connections, good friendships, and um, yeah, hopefully I can get in there soon. Yep. What was, the, uh, what was the personalities like in the group? Was there a fair bit going on there? Yeah, it Seems was good. like there's a few big personalities. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you can hear um, Foxy, you know, laughing wherever you are, and you hear the boom box going, and... Um, yeah, definitely a lot of big personalities there and a lot of laughter, a lot of fun. And um, yeah, it was a great few days I was in there. What about uh, good mates with your brother, Tyson Frizzell? Did he make uh, much sound in camp? He's nah. one of my good mates. I love the man, but uh, I couldn't, he's a quiet guy. Yeah, there was um, a lot bigger personalities there who sort of took the spotlight and took the, um, the microphone and spoke constantly. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was a great guy. I had a few conversations with him and um, yeah, I stuck with him a, a couple of times there. So. I didn't know too many people, so it was good to lean on him and um, catch up with him. Setbacks in rugby league, like, mm. how do you deal with that? You know, you p people who are watching at home, yeah. um, they don't know, you know, we touched on how good it is to be a professional rugby league player, but at the same time, you're dealing with injuries and we're in the middle of winter now. Mm. I can only imagine the bangs you got on your body, but what, what are you doing, you know, away from training to make sure that, you know, you're getting back to your best form when you're not playing well or you're looking after your injuries? Um, Injuries for me, so I, when I first came to the club, I had a knee, a knee reconstruction straight away. So I didn't train with the boys for the first six months when I was there and um, had made zero connections and mm. not one person there liked me, mm. uh, which is well established. <laughs> yeah. um, so in those situations, literally, you sort of keep those close to you. Close to you, like, that was where my mum and my brother really helped me out along the way, just getting, you know, my friends from Maruba sort of hanging around them and just keeping just uh, the good people in your life close to you um in terms of like you know poor form and uh things like that i think i think for me it's just going back to the basics you just gotta mm -hmm. you can't think too far ahead you gotta go you know break it down with the coaches where am i going wrong we're doing differently maybe change it up at training uh, all these sort of things and um yeah probably the hardest part, of, part about being injured is you know no piss no fun <laughs> which is a bit of a shame but which you know. has been you this whole time, mate. So that's which has been me this whole time, yeah. Been a good boy. So it's, uh, yeah, been a good boy is no fun, but it's got to be done sometimes. So, Blake, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, for me, um, I just sort of keep footy, um, you know, at the gates when you leave the, the ground, you sort of leave it there. And, um, yeah, I don't like to sort of sit on things for too long. And I know the game can sometimes be complicated too much. And, like Toby said, going back to the basics and just doing the little things right. And, um, yeah, I seem to lean on them. And, um, yeah, I definitely leave footy at, at the gates. I don't like to watch, um, you know, too much video if I've, you know, haven't played too well or I like to just strip it back and um, keep it pretty simple. Yeah. What about, you know, that Melbourne Storm game last week? And I know games I played like that, which sucked. Mm. I wouldn't get much sleep the night after, even though I didn't have much of an effect on the result if we won or lost. But <laughs> for, for yourself and you, Toby, you know, say you got a 7.30 game home by 10.30, 11, are you then looking at the, the ceiling all night? Like, do you sleep after a game and do you process everything? Well, I think uh, you wouldn't sleep after a game because you'd be out doing <laughs> extracurricular activities. <laughs> but anyway... Guilty. Guilty. No, no, no. Um, no after a... Oh, you know what, I think my sort of rule of thumb, I never really sleep after games anyway. Too much adrenaline pumping through the body, that sort of stuff. Um, don't, look, don't smile on me like that. <laughs> Not uh, a beach road? <laughs> nah, never heard of it. What's that? Um, nah, but I, I just sort of, my general rule of thumb is that night, feel terrible. Like, you know, let it all out. Uh, but after 24 hours is up. I think that's sort of what Fitzy brought it actually. Mm. Yeah. Um, you just let it park it at the door. The only thing you can do there is try and get better for the following week. There's no point dwelling on it for however long you, you try to dwell on it for. It's just going to make you worse and it's just going to put you in a negative mindset. And the biggest thing that I think Fitz has actually brought to this club is just trying to stay positive. Uh, a positive work environment is, you know, a happy one and a happy one is generally a successful one. So, uh, 
There you go. Nice. That was good. good. Lyrical right, genius. Brails? Well, it's hard to beat that. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think um, I'll definitely, um, after a loss, I'll be sitting at the ceiling and staring at the walls and thinking what I could have done different. But um, I think the way the coaches sort of keep it positive, even though, you know, you didn't play too well. And, um, you know, if they double down and, um, you know, knock you around even more, it's not great. And then you sort of kick stains for another two, three days. So um, I think the way they keep it positive and just keep it honest and, um, you know, we don't sit on losses for too long. You watch your video, you get that done. And then, uh, you know, you close that book and you move on to next week. And for me, that helps. I, I like to move on pretty quickly, not sort of dwell on it. And um, I think we got pretty good at that. You know, any good stories on the boys or any good nicknames that you want to share with uh, the, the watchers and the listeners? Oh, Teague Wilt, massive tight ass, actually. Yep. There was one mm-hmm. time in 2019, uh, I played my first game for the Jets and I actually made friends f- for the first time and since being at the Sharks. <laughs> it took about nine months. <laughs> We were out in the piss and we, we stopped past, we are in a taxi, stopped past Maccas on the way home. This is really fresh, wasn't it? Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is early on. Um, I've gotten over it, obviously, as you can tell. <laughs> um, so we stopped past Maccas on the way in a taxi, so the time's ticking over. It's like a $70 a Maccas feed. Um, at the time, I'm working at 45 to support myself to try and earn a bit of extra cash. Pay for that. And then we get to the Teague's house, which was a rundown meth lab, pretty much, at the time <laughs> in Sutherland. <laughs> Get in the, and as soon as we get to the house, he just goes, oh, sweet house, mate, bang, gets out of the cab, and I end up paying for that as well. So um, he still hasn't forgiven, uh, sorry, I still haven't forgiven him because he hasn't said sorry yet. So T. Wilton, tight ass. Mm. There you go. Anyone else? No, I think what needs to be brought up is probably Dal Finucane, the ultimate plugger. Yeah. Every post he does, <laughs> every photo he posts, it's yeah. embarrassing your brand. He's posting something, he's making these weird videos, he's doing something that, um, you know, just to get free things and, you see him walk through the, the doors every day and he's got his clothes on and everything's given to him for free. So <laughs> I don't, he might be another tight ass there because he doesn't spend money on clothes. Or, oh, he is a tight ass for sure. Yeah, brings his own lunch. Yeah. Which really? Is, which is a plug. You foods, I think it is, or he yeah. gets his meals. And <laughs> I don't know where he spends his money because he gets a free car. He gets his meals, gets his food, he gets his clothes. Spends money on property. Ultimate, plug, ultimate plugger. Yeah. Well, Teague, is he re-signed yet for next year? Yeah. So he's still uh, off contract. So maybe mm. when that new contract comes through, will you go asking him back for <laughs> half of that? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, maybe like a, maybe a KFC feed and <laughs> an Uber to somewhere exotic. Be yeah. nice. Yeah. Exotic, define. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. No. Um, <laughs> Right, well, James Graham, I, I, I used to call him Gravity because he'd bring the mood down and take <laughs> everyone's energy. <laughs> yeah, that's a doozy. Have yeah. you got anyone in the group like Easy, that? Yeah, Cam uh, Guinness. Cam, oh, really? Cam I love that guy. Yeah, sometimes, like, I'm next to him in the um, the sheds. <laughs> if I walk through the door, he just looks at me and goes, like, I've got I've these new pair of shoes, these Birkenstocks. <laughs> they're like these clog-looking German shoes. They're new, they're fashion. He doesn't understand. He's getting old. You know, he doesn't understand fashion. Mm-hmm. He's rolling in with a, a wife beater singlet. He's, <laughs> he's wearing all sorts of things. He's actually offering me money not to wear them. <laughs> so he's just constantly just picking at me through little things like that. Yeah, no, I can Clothing. find a way to... to mm. If he can find a thing to complain about, <laughs> yeah, put it that way. I love him as well. I love him to bits. He's one of my favourites at the Sharks. Yeah. But yeah, he'll just... He'll find a way, like someone walks in and he's like... Fuck wearing that for yeah. just like just <laughs> straight into yeah. it. Really? So yeah. he's not doing gratitude in the morning. He's, <laughs> not doing gratitude. No, he's, uh, not. he's waking up. He goes, yeah. "Fucking Braille's gonna have them fucking Birkenstocks yeah. on again." Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, constantly. Well, he gets up at four thirty every morning as well on his days off, so that can't be good for you. I don't know. What's he doing at four thirty when he wakes up, mate? Watch he, he gets he's, up. He's burying bodies. He's burying <laughs> bodies. Yeah, I agree. He's a serial killer. Well, boys, uh, thanks for coming along for the chat. I've really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we won't cut all that stuff you spoke out of it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks but, for having us, Lutzi. Thank you. Thanks, boys. <laughs>